most people in America are often miffed or marveled by the fact that they see someone who might be like me, who is a traveler, or technically homeless. I'm homeless because I had people impede my lawful rights to stay in a home. I am homeless because I had maintenance men and apartment representatives that kept coming in and out of my home, stealing my rock collections, abusing my property, moving my possessions about in my bathroom, and becoming absolutely a nuisance to the life of me. In moments of time, I knew that some of it was done by siblings who illegally and immorally used an emergency key that was given solely and singly for the purpose of visiting my home if for some reason that they didn't hear from me because I am in the age demographic of many of the men in my lineage of family that have heart attacks and die. My mother has often been concerned about that, worried about that, afraid of that, and overly zealous on that fact of health care, but the reality is I'm in pretty good health for the shape that I'm in. I'm in pretty good shape for the shape that I'm in, as my late father used to quip, despite the fact that he had a pot belly and could grow a beard as beautiful as mine during the winter holidays to participate in a faith walk. In life, we have moments of time, and he looked like Santa Claus most of the time. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and the truth is that my health care belongs solely and singly to me. It does not belong to any family member, yet I had a sibling who illegally and immorally took a card from my dresser drawer and called someone that I was seeing because my father was in the process of transitioning out of this world into the next. And I was also dealing with the loss of an important loved one in my life. But I did things for myself. I went off and I took a grieving class at a Noblesville Methodist Church that helped me to process more of the loss of my friend than really the loss of my dad, which I knew was pending in the end. I've told the story many times, and I'll tell it again, that when my late father was literally lying in a, what we call a, probably a coma, in which he had not been responsive for at least five to six or seven days, and at this time, it doesn't really matter to you how many days it was, you get that it's a week's time, that openly I said to the Lord, I made a prayer, that if my mother, who had been holding vigil beside him, needed a break, and if it was time for my father to ascend to the right hand, hopefully, of God for his awakening, his evaluation, his training, his life uh, revisitation, that I was okay if he needed to go. And at that exact moment of time that I concluded my prayer, my elder sibling called and let me know that my father was no longer there. So I went into my hourly, my paltry hourly retail job at the time. I spoke to my boss and I said, if you don't mind, I'd like to leave a little early because my father has just died. At that moment, a woman who had been an ultra bitch on wheels to me became the kindest you could ever see, and my boss was very respectful and very regardful, offered to drive me there if I needed it, and I said, no, no, that's all right, and they let me go early that night. I valued that moment of time. The reality is that my life story is my life story. But I've also had God's glory in other moments of time that are more significant, like the friend I talked about having lost in the number of times I had put myself on the floor, not only praying for her to come into my life, to change my life, to be significant in my life, to be my new wife, but also for those moments of time in our struggles and conversations when I would get on my knees and pray to God for her. And in that second of time, she would reconnect through social media of some kind or she would respond to me with a little love and kindness. It's amazing what the power of prayer can do for people today, and yet we have people who will make fun of you and me today because we believe in prayer. Yet our amendments are always being monstrously utilized in terms of the right to defend ourselves underneath the Second Amendment, and yet they're made fun of in terms of freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press of the First Amendment or the rights to our personhood, paperwork, and property of the Fourth Amendment that says we have the right to be secure in our pay persons. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth is, while I miss my late father, 
and what he did for our family to bring us together in love, honor, and regard at all times, in all celebrations, in all official extended family time, despite the fact that he was growing older and transitioning towards heaven, he always managed to do that with us all. And yet since his passing, there has been discord, there has been dysfunction, there has been abuses, there has been lies, there has been th no threats, but there has been defenses. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and the power of prayer is missing in many people's lives today. 